Hey, I'm Sarah Tigander, international speaker and trainer for a $40 million division in healthcare. With over a decade of experience working with healthcare providers, I believe that a healthcare practice should do more than just pay back student loans. Each week, I'll bring you the tips, tricks, and experts you need to build your practice both on and offline. Smart people take notes, so grab a pen or open up the Notes app on your phone as we dive into the Health of Your Business podcast. They say in business, you need to niche down and then niche down and then niche down again. And I've done that. If you've been following me here on the Health of Your Business podcast, you've seen I just keep getting more and more specific to the point where a few weeks ago I said, did I make up what I'm doing now? Am I really the only person that does this? I feel like instructional design, onboarding experiences, curriculum, adult learning, the actual putting together of courses and love for tech that I have is something that I made up because I'm not hanging out with anyone else. And the worst thing to do is to be the smartest person in any room. And so I just said, I've got to find other people. And all of a sudden in a group that I've been a part of for years and years, I found someone and it sounded like she was doing exactly what I was doing, exactly what I want to be doing, exactly with the exact people that I want to help. And I said, oh my gosh, we need to collaborate because you must do things a little bit different than me. And we I just need to validate that, that this is the conversation that I want to have every single day. And that's such a huge thing I want to just stress is that there is not no such thing as competition. It is total collaboration. We're all going to have our own special sauce. You're, we're all going to have our own thing to share. And the other thing is that I love to create really intimate relationships. And there is definitely times where people reach out to me and I say, I'm so sorry, my plate is full. I need to refer you and to send you to someone else. And that is also such a beautiful thing to be able to have that kind of collaboration around you. I was just texting with my dad a few minutes ago and I said, we got to get out networking because we're starting to be asked for referrals in our backyard of other providers. And we obviously don't have all the tools that we need. And so that's why I did this interview today. In this interview, the person that I found, we were coached under the same coach, but not at the same time, kind of found each other by a happenstance post. And I slightly stalked her, I've got to say, um, to find her to say, you've got to come on the podcast. I got to have you on the podcast. We scheduled and rescheduled because sometimes life just gets in the way. And I absolutely love that she comes from a high performance and business mind but worked as a therapist herself, different background than me. You guys know I've never been a provider myself. Um, I am a recovered pharmaceutical rep. I have been in and out of hospitals. I say I went to medical school with my father, but um, but she has that actual in, in the clinic experience. And she works specifically with therapists, um, your occupational therapist, your physical therapist, uh, that type of therapist, and who are navigate, navigating the online space. Because how do we do this online? That's a very physical type of therapy where you're together, but she's helping those types of therapists uh, as coaches, course creators, community builders, and my favorite, which is educators, helping her clients be more strategic with their numbers, more confident with their sales systems. Gosh, do I love a systems girl. And has an, an emphasis on relationship-based business transactions and selling from the heart. So Melissa LaPointe is my guest today. I really hope that you're going to love the conversation that we have as much as I do. And this is not just... Um, about, not just about the income, even though that's important too, but really that impact and creating a system for both. So let's get to it. Melissa LaPointe, you have fascinated me since our first call together. And so um, I, as usual, Half of the questions I'm going to ask you are totally self-serving for me, um, self-serving for my current clients, uh, but uh, you are 
Incredible. I want to take people back though, to that moment, you know, tell us about your backgrounds because you are a health provider and when you needed to pivot. Give me that origin story, please. Oh my goodness. Okay. How long do we have? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for having me. And my, you know, my origin story in terms of healthcare. So I got started as a pediatric occupational therapist and when I really, so 2005 is when I started practicing and a rural healthcare practitioner, meaning I did all the things. So, you know, there was a parent coaching component there, all areas. That's the life of a rural practitioner. And it was in 2008 through one of my pediatric mentors that she really started to introduce me to the neurobiology behind challenging behaviors and really going into the science of attachment and attunement. And that's what really opened me up to the world of integrative health, to the world of complementary and alternative medicine. Because at that point, Roman Catholic upbringing, my mom's a nurse, my dad's a teacher, really small community and very medical model. You know, that's how I was raised and that's what I was comfortable with. And relocating out to British Columbia really opened my eyes to a lot of alternative complementary medicine. So going into the science of attachment and attunement and really understanding that 80% of therapy is around connection. So there's this whole other piece in terms of connection. You know, how can you as a therapist connect with your clients when you yourself are dysregulated or when you yourself are not comfortable in your own skin or not grounded or at that point was struggling with chronic pain and really started experimenting with my own health and well-being and how I can be more comfortable in my own skin and was really leaning into in my handling skills and pediatrics and working with a lot of challenging kiddos who, you know, from a neurodevelopmental standpoint had experienced a lot and was working with a lot of kiddos who had been apprehended through the foster care system and really had very traumatic experiences. So that was in 2000, you know, 2005, and I practiced for seven years in pediatrics. And really, it was around my own personal journey, you know, and that was that was coming out through my my therapy practice as well. But what I was doing to be more present and confident and really working on my own chronic pain. So I had chronic back pain for a number of years. Then I started to shift into prenatal, postnatal health and women's health. And that was just a whole other can of worms in terms of where the medical system is falling short and how much we now know about emotional health, mental health, spiritual health, financial health, and how this all plays a role in our physical health. So that, you know, continued to, to play out in my therapy career. And then I started to teach, you know, I've always been passionate about teaching and mentoring and working with other therapists, other healthcare practitioners. Teaching has always been part of my, my career in terms of offering professional growth workshops. And so that continued. And in 2015, again, because of my own chronic health issues at the time, um, the online space wasn't, you know, I felt like I had, my back was against the wall and I couldn't travel. I, you know, was dealing with a lot in terms of my tailbone pain. I had a toddler who wasn't sleeping very well, but I still wanted to teach. And my first two day in-person workshop, when I had a three-year-old to also, it didn't work. Let's just say it was very challenging. And I thought, okay, how can I still expand my reach and reach the therapist that I want to work with? So I created my first online course, having no idea what I was doing. Um, so that was my, you know, in 2015, and I just jumped into the online space. Okay, let's figure this out as we go. And it continued to evolve, you know, and then in 2017 is when I, uh, at that point was, you know, I had my brick and mortar practice and I made the tough decision to let it go because I was hitting that glass ceiling and, you know, 
which direction do I want to go? I can't clone myself, even though, you know, I've looked into that, uh, but really looking at where do I want to go and what is truly lifting me up and location independence was big for me. Um, and I wasn't willing to give up the mentoring. And at that point was starting to do more coaching with other healthcare professionals and really could see the ripple effect that I was having by empowering more healthcare professionals to have a bigger impact, to think outside the box, to expand their their reach. Um, and it lit me up in a way that, you know, I loved the pediatric piece and I loved working with the clients, but the paperwork side of healthcare is really demanding. And all of the, you know, there's a lot to healthcare. And as a practitioner, um, it was leading me down the path of burnout. And I wanted to stop that before you know, I, I didn't like it at all. So when I switched over to mentoring and coaching healthcare professionals, and again, in the online space, um, but my approach is very much, and we'll talk more about that, but very relationship-based word of mouth referrals. And I have a very minimalist approach to my online business, which serves me. It's not for everyone, but that's how, how I operate. And, you know, 5.30 in the morning on a Monday. Like there's no Monday blues for me. I love what I do. Uh, so yeah, I think, you know, here for a reason and really following my heart and really leaning into my strengths in the process. Mm, and I think so many providers can relate. You, you use the word burnout. And I think there's a lot of providers that, you know, they're calling it, um, it you know, whether it's that, the great burnout or the great walkout or, you know, where it, all of a sudden a lot of providers are saying, whoa, do I want to do yeah. this forever. Uh, you know, retirement feels like it's a magical unicorn for everyone. I mean, I don't think that that's just in healthcare. I think it's in a lot of different industries. And uh, so, you know, it, you talk a lot about having sustainable income stream outside of a paycheck. So, you know, you're not saying like, let's just walk away from the hospital system and give them, you know, the big giant middle finger and uh, say, let's you know, there's a lot of people that still love that day to day, but they're like, mm, but maybe I don't want to do it as many days. Maybe I don't want to do it at this location. Maybe I don't want to do it forever. Where do we start, mm -hmm. Melissa? Like, where, where do you tell, I know where I tell people to start, but where do you tell people to start in terms of getting, you know, some other kind of income stream? Start by reaching out and getting support. Because when we're looking at revenue streams, we, so many times, first of all, you don't know what you don't know. So you can take the long windy road. I did. And that's why I'm so passionate about doing what I'm doing so that I can shorten that. I don't want to take away from your learning experiences and your learning opportunities. You have to go through that. That's not, you know, it's not for me to take that away from you. But if I can help to speed up the process a little bit, to simplify the process a little bit, that's what I like to do. So, but reaching out and getting support, because once we start to talk about revenue streams, you're no longer a healthcare professional. You are an entrepreneur who is providing as one of your services, healthcare, you know, looking at whether it's therapy, whatever that is. And those are two, two very different hats. So I work with a lot of healthcare professionals who are trying to build an online revenue stream as a healthcare professional. They're pricing as a healthcare professional. They are approaching goal setting as a healthcare professional. They are approaching sales and marketing as a healthcare professional. There is such a clash. There is such a conflict of internal values when you approach that. Instead, you have to look at this as you are an entrepreneur. And I realize there are a lot of healthcare professionals listening to this who may be like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not an entrepreneur. I also work with a lot of healthcare professionals who have been in business for 18 months, two years before they're comfortable really owning that they are an entrepreneur. So whatever term you use, an accidental entrepreneur, an aspiring entrepreneur, a social entrepreneur, you know, that's what I had to start with. Okay, I'm not an entrepreneur. Maybe I'm a social entrepreneur and really utilizing a revenue stream to facilitate change on a societal level. Whatever you're comfortable with, recognizing that this is a business, 
and one of your revenue streams and looking at customer fulfillment, sure, that's where the therapy or that's where the healthcare piece falls into place. But that's only one of many, many, many hats that you're wearing. And you have to be comfortable putting it on, putting that hat on, but also taking it off and really leaning into, okay, I'm, I'm the business owner today and this is how I have to show up. So that takes time. It takes time. It's a different language. It's a very steep learning curve. So reach out. You don't know your blind spots. You don't know what you don't know. You know, sure, you can try to learn it yourself, but you don't even know what to put in for search terms. So make it easier on yourself. I think people so often wait to reach out for help until they're struggling. You can eliminate so much of the struggle by reaching out and finding a coach, finding a program, finding a consultant, somebody who can help guide you through that um, sooner rather than later. I mean, success leaves clues to become a provider. You, you pay to get trained. You pay to get mentored. You pay to do you know those hours in a residency type setting in an internship like setting. Why wouldn't you do the same if you're trying to do a, a completely different skill set? And I agree with you. you know, it, like just go ahead and get the cliff notes from someone. And uh, we're not here. We're very social beings as humans. So you know, we're not trying to reinvent something. That's the other thing is you don't have to sit there. You know, I I'm, I don't know about you, Melissa. My friends and I, we all joke when we see like the latest thing on television or the Christmas gadget or whatever it is. I mean, like, hello, I wish I invented the air fryer. Like the air fryer to our generation is like the crock pot to my grandma's generation. Like what's the next thing going to be? I sit there, I keep myself up at night. Like I will, if I could just think of something else, there is no mentorship for like creating something out of the blue. That's not what you're doing. You're not creating something out of the blue. It, you're not the first provider that's decided to make money outside of a hospital system. And so I, I, I am with you totally. Like, go find some kind of mentorship. I would say the second thing um, that I would tell people to do, which I know is something that you would too, is go ahead and start building your tribe. Like go get your list, go find your people, start asking them questions, start serving them. But today reach is a really hot topic. And you know, people are like, well, what does that mean? I don't know how to do an Instagram reel. I don't know how to have a podcast. I don't know how to build a website. I don't, all of a sudden, all these limiting beliefs like get, you know, pulled, pulled into things. But what are your best tips when it comes to reach? When we talk about reach, you know, again, for so many of us, I dare say all of us, you know, connection is such a big piece. And where I see a disconnect is we, you know, that we forget that there are humans behind the emails, behind the, you know, Instagram messages, behind the views on your Instagram reel. So it's getting clear on your strengths getting clear on the type of connections you want and trusting in that process and having fun with it. You know, working with people on what is it, so many therapists that I've worked with asking, what is it that you want out of, you know, oh, I hate social media. Okay, what are you craving? I'm craving or I'm really wanting deeper connection. Okay, so instead of thinking you need to create an Instagram reel for 5,000 people, who do you really want to connect with? What's going to light you up? Who do you want to serve? Who do you want to support? Create the content for them and invite them into these deeper connections if that's what you want. If, you, if that's not what you want, you know, so I guess the first step is getting clear on what you want <laughs> and then going for it. But people forget the power of connection. You know, I don't love showing up on video, but I love the connection that facilitates. So when I'm showing up on video, I'm not focusing on the camera. I'm looking at that camera as a tool, as a portal for me to go through that. That's my energy source to connect with the people behind the camera. So I'm not in my head anymore thinking about the camera. I'm visualizing the people that I'm connecting with heart to heart, having these beautiful conversations with, and that's what lights me up. And that's what keeps me going. And that's where word of mouth is still a very powerful piece that we forget about. You know, we have still, I'd say 60 to 80% for, you know, for us, our customers come from word of mouth referrals. You know, we're, we're not doing a lot of paid advertising. Well, this year we've done no paid advertising. We've been serving through word of mouth. So 
get clear on who you want to serve, how you want to serve them, and what type of connection you're craving and starting there. Don't think, oh my goodness, I need to get a million people. How am I going to create content for a million people? Then we get up in our head and we spin our wheels and we go nowhere, especially as healthcare professionals. You know, that, that ability to connect with, with other people is such a big piece of the puzzle. And when you're moving into the online space, you don't have to lose that. You don't have to drop that. Oh, I don't wanna work in the online space because I crave relationships. I crave connection. I hear people say that and my brain explodes. I'm like, oh my goodness. I have had some of the most intense, beautiful therapeutic relationships with clients that I've never met in person. You know, the ability, what we have through technology is amazing. You can still get that, but you have to be aware of that and be aware of your strengths and how you can play on that. Yeah, no, I, I, that is so true. I am thinking about, you know, some marketing tactics of olden days, you know, and I, when I first started in business, the big thing was get your business card because you got to make sure that everyone has your business card. And some places you would make sure that they would have a stack of your business cards because people really would, they would say, hold on, let me look and let me give you this person's business card. Right. And today, if you give me a business card, which people still sometimes do, I'm like, could I take a picture of it? Because I am not going to keep this anywhere. I do not have a place for it in my life. I will not have this piece of paper. Can I follow you somewhere on Instagram, on Facebook? The thing is, is then I follow you and then you're radio silent. And then I'm not that that's not then my that's where my Rolodex of business cards are. I'm like, who's active? What are they doing? What's going on? I go check in on my friends. I go see what they're doing. And if I like what you're doing, that's how I'm going to give someone your business card. I am going to share it in messenger to Mm -hmm. someone else. Like we are going to have a conversation about you. We are going to uh, one of the people I love to follow um, Jasmine star. I absolutely love Jasmine star, Jasmine star. I have a picture with her. She has no idea who I am. I have bought Jasmine star. I'm in her community. I've been there for years. I've paid her hundreds of dollars. She would not have any idea who I am. Yet I, when she moved into her house, you know, just this week, I sent my husband the video of her and her family moving into the house. And I'm like, are we not so happy for Jasmine? Like if, you know, whatever you, you, that's, that's that referral. So when people say, where do you get your stock images, Sarah? How, what are you mentored in social media? I'm like, my girl, Jasmine, and you got to go look at her baby, Luna. Luna's so cute. Like I'm, I'm raving about her as if like, you're, you know, you're totally right. Most like, I think Jasmine's one of my friends. Like she has no idea who I am. And, uh, you know, this is what we need to do. We need to treat everyone like they are our friends. We need to remember that. Um, we need to create that experience. That's how people are going to get that no like and trust. It's like, hello, you know, we are no longer riding around on horse and buggies. Like, you know, I'm sure there was resistance when Henry Ford came out with the Model T and said, oh, what is that, you know, newfangled thing? How am I going to drive that? I'm comfortable with my, you know, good old girl Sally to get me around. Like, hello, we've got to move into the next wave. And if that means, social media or video or, you know, whatever it's going to mean in the next few years, that's the business card. That's what it is. And, um, I like it. And there are ways. Yeah. And there are, you know, there are so many ways you can show up, you can do it authentically and you can, you know, be quirky and really looking at why are we showing up in the way that we are, but understanding, you know, it's dripping breadcrumbs and it's building that relationship. And depending on the type of service that you're offering, you know, you may put an offer out and people may not take you up on it, but it's not that you didn't get the sale. It's that you didn't get the sale yet. That's such a big piece. And, you know, we have, so many people in our membership community where we have this discussion all the time, you know, they come in, Oh, I didn't get the sale. And I, and I laugh because I can put it back on them and say, how many times did you and I connect or how many of my free masterclasses did you come to before you signed up to work for me or work with me? And, you know, their eyes go big and they start laughing and they're like, Oh, you know, it was sometimes a year, sometimes 18 months. And they just weren't ready. They weren't ready to make that shift yet. And, you know, it's not that they said no to me. It was no, you know, and that's the beauty of longevity. That's the beauty of being in this industry for as long as I have is that I know 
you know, okay, we can warm up and it takes time. And maybe I pop the question too soon and that's okay. And you need a little bit more time to really know, like, and trust me because, Hey, I'm quirky too, not one to, you know, so get used to my teaching style and get used to how I show up and get used to the way I interact with my people. And, you know, that's okay. So really looking at, you know, again, you're a business owner, or you are an entrepreneur, you are, you know, that content creator, not the healthcare professional in that situation. You're talking about your experiences, but, you know, because in healthcare professions, so many of us, you know, testimonials are bad. Profit is bad. Selling is bad. Um, you know, in occupational therapy, we were very much taught you shouldn't promote yourself as an individual. You should promote the profession. So, 50% of the websites I go to still, you know, front and center primary real estate is all about what OT is. And I'm like, oh my goodness, people don't care. <laughs> like, they don't care. They care about how you can solve their pain points and their problems. You know, they, they don't care if you're an OT, they don't care if you're, you know, a nurse practitioner, they don't care if you're an orthopedic surgeon, they care about, oh, that's great that what they're doing, but you know, I don't, I don't have time for that. I have to go look for someone who can solve my problems, right? So it's really getting clear on how you want to show up. And, you know, again, it doesn't have to feel heavy. What are your strengths? What do you enjoy doing? Who do you enjoy working with? You know, the beauty of, of this type of work, you don't have to work with everyone. You don't want to work with everyone. And it's okay to put out content that repels people if it attracts, you know, your people um, and really gosh, niching down and getting super clear on the type of client you want. And that's uh, so different than what everyone's been taught because you're part of a hospital system, you're part of an insurance system, you're part of an electronic medical record. So you're you know, bound by those parameters. You have to see so many people in so much time. So there's time parameters. Maybe you only get 20 minutes per patient, maybe only had seven minutes per patient. And the case of my dad as a obstetrician gynecologist at times, you know, maybe um, you had to send everything through uh, an EMR, the electronic medical record. So you were bound just by their handouts or, you know, the dreaded gold standard in the medical industry, which is photocopies of photocopies. I don't understand why it's the only industry I've ever been in where it's acceptable to give someone a photocopy as a, of a photocopy, um, as, you know, this is your coveted information on how to prep from surgery, and you can barely even read it. And so, you know, now there was no experience that was part of the healthcare system because that was all done by other people. So if you sent them to the pharmacy, that was the experience of the pharmacy. It wasn't a reflection on you. It wasn't a reflection from the EMR, you know, it wasn't a reflection on how much time you got. Now, all of a sudden you can create your own thing, which means you get to create your own curriculum design. And so, you know, it, you and I have this love for instructional mm, design. We have yes. a love for adult learners, adult learners on the internet today. You know, why do you think it's essential, you know, today, in, you know, 2022, why is it essential to have someone help you with curriculum design? Because statistics show that 95% of the people aren't going to complete your content. You know, that's, that's the reality. You my first online course, I took what I would have taught in a three-day professional development in-person workshop, same slides, same approach, and I recorded it and I posted the, you know, 90 minute long presentations. And I didn't know what I didn't know, you know, understanding, and I have a brain-based approach to the online space. I'm fascinated by the different ways that we learn. And that's something that you need to consider. So if you don't know all the different learning styles, and if you aren't aware of the human attention span being now shorter than a goldfish. And if you are, you know, you have to take into consideration the customer user experience and you can have the best content in the world. If you're not delivering it in a way that adapts to the learning style of the person on the other side of this side of the screen or the other side of the learning platform, you're not going to have the impact that you want. And I have seen so many healthcare professionals put blood, sweat, and tears into their content, their programs to have them not complete it, to have them 
you know, people are disappearing. So really, again, you don't know what you don't know and working with or, or reaching out and getting support so that all of your knowledge, your wisdom, your years of experience, you can package that in a way that will actually get consumed and make a difference, which is going to come back and light you up and motivate you to keep going. And when you're not comfortable on video, but you're seeing those testimonials, you're hearing about the stories of how you facilitated change and how people to transform their lives, that's what gives you the courage to continue to step outside the box. That's what gives you the courage to show up and do that reel or show up on TikTok or show up in a way that as a health professional, you have never had to show up before. And that's what then starts to make it fun, right? So it's this constant process of personal growth and evolution, but that's what, what gives us the motivation to keep doing that is, is hearing the stories of how we can impact people. But if you don't know what you don't know, get support, you know, talk to somebody in terms of curriculum design, in terms of the online learning space and what it takes to reach people, you know, five to eight minute videos, keeping it small, getting clear, you know, getting clear on, on the roadmap on the journey you want them to take and what it's like on their side. You know, so often we get used to our own platforms, our own tools, and we just assume people know, and recognizing, oh, wait a minute, should I create a short two minute video screen sharing, showing them how to log in, showing them, you know, maybe when they sign in for the first time and I've put all this energy into the sales page and to the sales funnel emails, maybe I can put that same energy into my onboarding experience, into my onboarding emails. And, oh, wait a sec, maybe, you know, what is it that they don't know? And, oh, instead of sending them to a Facebook group right away, maybe I could show them how to log in and create a student welcome page. And as much energy can go into that student welcome page to step them through the first steps, then the thing, you know, then the sales page, because these are the people who have committed to working with you. These are the people who have put you know, the money into, like, they're there. They want and, and honoring that. So I think that's part of it too, is really taking the time to step back and look at that customer experience and looking at the type of roadmap we want to bring people on and knowing we're not meant to serve everybody at all levels of their journey. You know, we're there for a short amount of time and how can we have the biggest impact with that short amount of time that we're with somebody? People don't mind repetition either because you'll know if you already it. know the they information. Need repetition. Yeah, yeah. If I've already seen it and I'm like, I got that, I'm skimming over it. But if it's something that's applicable to me, I'm stopping, I'm looking at it. Like we're really good. And I'm sure the people that are coming to you, if they're coming to you, they're asking for information, they're willing, they're open, they paid you, right? So now like, let's serve them. And I think about some of my favorite experiences, whether it's my, the best uh, restaurants that I've eaten in my favorite hotel experience. Uh, I just joined a new gym, Melissa, and I still have been getting about three emails a week about all the different services at my gym. And it's been so cool. Some of the stuff I knew because I'm a really great, you know, audio learner. And so when they sat and they did the sales presentation at the gym, they told me about all the services. I remember them all, but there were things that my husband didn't remember that when he read it in an email, he's like, did you know that, you know, X, Y, and Z about our new gym? And I'm like, yeah, I remembered it from hearing it, but I get you needed to see it. And so it, it, it's okay that I saw it again. Didn't matter to me. I'm, I'm fascinated by the way that they're, they send me about three emails a week. I'm uh, maybe four weeks into being part of the gym and I'm still in this mm. onboarding experience. And I just think that's, it's been so cool. And it's really showed me too. You can't send too many onboarding emails. I'm not unsubscribing. I totally could maybe because I'm fascinated by onboarding yes. experiences, but I mean, there's still, I'm learning new things. So why would I opt out? I am paying a good amount of money for this gym. I want to take advantage of all the services. And it seems like every week they keep telling me about a new service. Yes. So why not do the same? Like, don't just expect people to be able to say, okay, well, I told them once I send them one email or it was there on the sales page that they maybe saw weeks ago. You can't just do that. So you really need to show people and that's going to help your referrals in the long yes. run. 
And um, another thing that I think is really important that I do with all my courses is just bake in the testimonial process as well. Make that a mm. part of it. Tell people at the beginning, it's what they're going to do. Ask them, ask them multiple times, you know, gamify things, gamify the testimonial collection process. Um, I think all these things are really just so huge. Um, I don't, is there anything mm -hmm. else you want to add about, you know, curriculum design in general? Cause I, this, we might just need our yeah. own little time just to talk <laughs> now that I've warmed everyone up to you. <laughs> Well, I think again, coming back to repetition, because what is it you're trying to convey? There's introducing a concept, there's really sitting with that. And again, coming back to those word of mouth referrals, coming back to presenting information in different formats, audio, visual, because you're not just looking for people. We want to do better than good enough. And it's not just introducing them, it's really inviting them, welcoming them, warming them up. But repetition is key because you don't just you don't just want them to retain the info. It's retaining the info. And we're bombarded by messaging 24 hours a day. So retaining the info to the extent that in a different scenario, when you're no longer in my classroom, you still remember that info and you can then share it with someone else. You know, that's the beauty of empowering people through education, empowering people with this, with this knowledge, this information is that when they're in a different scenario, they're still carrying you on their shoulder. And they're remembering pieces of it and they're sharing that, you know, and, and that's the experience we want to create is really this, this, you know, 3D experience where they are immersed in your world and realizing that just because you have something listed on the sales page doesn't mean they've seen it, doesn't mean they'll remember it. Lots of people sign up for things without reading those long, you know, I'm not saying long sales pages aren't good, but they're the long form sales pages, but don't assume people have seen every little bit or that they will retain it. Same thing with some of your emails. You know, there's something to be said about repetition, especially if it's a new experience for somebody. If I'm going to see a doctor and the procedure or the appointment is something new, I may be a little bit nervous and guess what helps me feel better? routine, structure, going through some pieces that, ah, this part is at least familiar. So from a nervous system standpoint, I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more regulated. I know there's going to be something new, but I'm okay. And we can create that with our learning experiences, you know, oh, okay, this is repetition. Oh, and then there's a little new piece, but I've got this because for a lot of people, platforms, technology, tools, software, there are so many moving parts and we get used to what we know. And it's so easy for us to assume everyone knows. No, not everyone knows how to sign into Kajabi and change their settings. Not everyone knows how to, you know, download the app and adjust their notifications. Don't make those assumptions. If they do know, that's great. And in my role, you know, I get to serve healthcare professionals. So it's always motivating me to do better because I can lead by example. So, okay, you, you know, this may not benefit you because you've been part of this program for three years, but our updated onboarding experience, you now get to experience in a different way. And I hope that you take this through to your work and how you're showing up for your people. So, you know, that's a big piece of it as well. When we are in a trailblazing or a visionary role. And we are supporting more healthcare professionals to expand their reach by also mentoring and supporting and coaching healthcare professionals. You know, I think there's, there's such a, yeah, it's, it's really this, you know, this ripple effect that we're creating. So really showing up in, you know, and being the change that we want to see in, in the health and wellness industry. Mm, I love this. I love, that. and I hope more people understand that and they, they can take notes from just this podcast episode, just to do a little audit on their own journey. If they've gone into online course creation, online teaching. And, and I think a course too, doesn't mean that it has to be in something like Kajabi. It still can be a very one-on-one -on -one structure. Oh, no, I, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I think that people, too many people today, and this has always aggravated me about medicine is Am I just seeing you continually or are you going to tell me at some point when I'm better and I am discharged? Uh, that to me makes a lot of sense. You know, when is those checkpoints? When is the time that we evaluate and say, am I making progress or am I 
staying the same. Um, it doesn't mean all my providers do that, right? I'm about to take my son to the pediatrician for his two week checkup on Monday and that, you know, but I, I know I logged into the portal. I saw what the agenda is. I know what the milestones are that he should or shouldn't be hitting. We already, you know, had an opportunity to discuss that through the online portal. Now I'm going to go and, and go through my 20 minute appointment and I'm not going to be discharged from the pediatrician, but in your programs that you're creating outside of your hospital service-based setting in that traditional sense, there needs to be some kind of, you know, checkpoints, even if it is, well, we're showing up online, I'm doing calls with you, how, how do we structure this? How do I know when I've achieved your program promise, whatever it is that you're telling me? And, you know, I, I think that you would agree, Melissa, that we want to see less people waste money on sales and marketing if they don't actually have the program created because we don't want this just to be the fluff of really great words and, you know, the best stock images and awesome design. That's not what this is. I mean, you and I, we've sold things without even any sales pages, because when you can really get to the heart of what (laughs) someone needs, they're like, sign me up. I'm in. That sounds right. I bought things that same way, you know, where I've been with people and I'm like, I need that. You know, we were just talking about a mutual friend of ours who I said, wait, you do taxes? Like, could you do my taxes? Like, please just send me whatever your onboarding um, information is. I didn't need to read anything else about him. Like I knew he was going to be great. It was going to be a good experience. We clicked. Um, so, you know, just things like that. It just think about ways that you've signed on with people and then what their promises are. Um, this is great. And I know Melissa, so you work in specifically with therapists. Can you just let my audience know, like, who are you for? And we're going to link in the show notes, um, ways for everyone to find you and follow you and your website. You are so generous on the internet. So I hope people go and grab your master classes and freebies and all the things you always have to come, but who, who are you specifically working with these days? So these days I'm working specifically with occupational therapists and physiotherapists who are really looking to build online revenue streams that are sustainable and that are rewarding. So the lifestyle piece, you know, reminding ourselves why we're doing what we're doing. And I am definitely attracting more therapists who are serving other therapists. You know, that's something that, so in terms of their coaching programs, their mentorship programs. So really attracting a lot, um, a lot of therapists who are moving into a leadership position or who, or who are already well-established as leaders in their industry. Um, and really looking at ways that we can, you know, I'm, I'm helping them to shift out of that clinician mode and into that CEO role. And knowing that this is an ongoing journey, you know, knowing that this is not something that happens overnight. This is something that we are forever working on. It's about the long game and it's really getting clear on what we want to experience throughout the journey. It's not, there's no graduation date. There's, you know, it's not the destination and how we can approach that. So there's, you know, an endurance component to it for sure. And really working on, again, program design, online education, um, and this last year really leaning into financial health and money mindset. You know, I think that's a big piece. Um, And we have, you know, ours is very much a relationship-based approach to the online space and really learning to love selling. And that's a big piece as well for therapists. Um, But when we look at our offers and how we can grow and evolve with our offers and learning how to sell intuitively and love what we're doing. And, you know, for me, the transformation is in that transaction. So helping therapists to, again, embrace that CEO role and our practitioners that we work with, we want them to make more money because they're the deeper their pockets, the the more good that they're doing in the world. You know, I want to see them generating more revenue because I am seeing the ripple effect that they are having. And, you know, good people, they're, they're making good money and doing really great things in the world. And, you know, that's where change, implementing change. And it's so important and it's so needed right now. 
so needed. And I, I love having some kind of social component to everything that I do and encouraging my providers to do the same thing. Um, again, Melissa, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, everyone go follow because her stuff is just uh, so great. And um, I'm glad that you're doing this work. And I know I'm going to send some therapists your way for sure. So um, I Sounds bet good. we're going to talk soon. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Sarah. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for listening. And you know, I want to help you have a healthy business inside and out. If you've been trying to market and sell your services and things just aren't clicking for you, then we'd like to help you have a major shift and feel completely confident in how you move people through a health journey. I want to invite you to take advantage of a special free health program discovery session where you'll work together with one of our coaches to create an empowering vision for your health business success. Find hidden barriers that may be limiting your growth. Feel the confidence successful health providers embody in their business and grab some inspiration for yourself to have a highly converting, highly successful signature health program. Head over to sarahtogender.com forward slash work with Sarah to grab one of our limited spots.